Now, I didn't know what AIDS was at the time, but the sound of the word felt insidious, wrong. It, it sounded nasty the way she said it, AIDS. Like a ratty little dog nipping at your ankle. Judgmental, AIDS. I'm uh, Paul Fairweather. I'm a 64-year-old gay man. I came to Manchester in 1978, and I came to work for the Campaign for Homosexual Equality, CHE, in 2003. I was elected as a Labour councillor in Harper Hay, North Manchester, and I took the lead on gay men's issues then. And I've also been involved since the early 1980s in the work around HIV and AIDS and helped set up Manchester AIDS Land in 1975. And it's now the George House Trust. So the George House Trust was founded in 1985. Uh, it originally started out as Manchester AIDS Line and was basically a phone line to uh, provide help and support uh, to people who had any questions around um, HIV. In 2009, I came out at the Vigil on Manchester Pride as living with uh, HIV. I've been a local councillor for quite a few years and I'd usually spoke at the Vigil as an openly gay councillor and HIV activist. I was diagnosed with HIV positive in 2000, but because my mum was still alive and I decided on balance, I didn't want to tell her I'd not come out. She died in 2007. And by 2009, I decided I wanted to be more public about it. So I spoke at the vigil about living with HIV and had an incredibly positive response from people at the vigil. Over the past 30 years, everything has changed, but also nothing has changed. I would say for some people in some places, very little. And for others, absolutely everything. So like treatments and life expectancy, a place at the table when we're talking about, you know, healthcare and, and treatments. There's differences in sort of healthcare and science and differences in society. Um, in terms of healthcare and science, I think it's been absolutely incredible how things have changed so radically over the years. Um, the fact that we have um, HIV medication that um, not only makes someone undetectable, there's also preventative medication that actually prevents someone being able to get it in the first place. PrEP is an anti-HIV medication. It's a pill that you take just before and after sex. Most people take it daily and it prevents HIV from being able to replicate in your body, which means that it protects you from acquiring a HIV infection. Um, and it works almost 100% in 100% of people. It doesn't matter what your sexuality is, what your gender identity is, what type of sex you're having. It protects everyone almost 100% when taken as directed. I know people who were diagnosed in 1985 who are now drawn their pension. Um, the medication is in a place where people maybe couldn't imagine. People are living long, healthy lives. But at the same time, the, the element where nothing has changed is that there's still a massive amount of stigma out of there that is having a really terrible effect on people's lives, on their professional life, on their mental health, um, on the, the sex and relationships that they are having or would want to have that they don't feel that they can. Preventative things have gone be from being seen as shameful to be seen as responsible. And that's happened maybe even less than five years. I swear it's happened in the last two years where friends would start getting prep um, and people would instantly go, well, why won't you use a condom? I said, well, no, no, it, it's not instead of, it's as well as. But also why not in instead of? Three decades ago, I mean, I was 10 and I was still even at that young age, aware of this kind of fear that was attendant with HIV. You know, it was the tombstone adverts. It was children dying in Africa. It was the Freddie Mercury story. Um, it was the plague. Uh, you know, there was nothing, pun, pun intended, nothing positive uh, about HIV AIDS. And then fast forward 30 years, the truth of it as a condition to live with um, is... It's completely different because what HIV is now is not the killer that it was three decades ago. One of the biggest ones is that somebody that becomes HIV positive will probably die because of it, um, which is totally untrue because somebody who is effectively taking treatment for HIV actually has a likelihood to live longer than somebody that isn't HIV positive. Another really big myth is that um, contracting HIV is a really easy thing to do. Um, 
you know, you have to have very specific bodily fluids exchanged in order to become HIV positive. And that's assuming as well that the other person you're sleeping with that is HIV positive isn't on treatment. I think that they still think it's a gay disease, uh, that it doesn't affect uh, straight people or, or uh, you know, it's literally just within the queer community. I think a lot of people think that um, people living with HIV are promiscuous. That's really not the case. I mean, when I worked at George Hayes Trust, I knew people um, who contracted HIV from the first time having sex. Uh, I knew married people um, who had never had sex until they were married and contracted HIV from the partner. It affects everyone um, and it's always affected everybody. The stigma and stereotype of HIV is the, the fact that it's a death sentence and that has come from the fact that when we were growing up, it was so close to the 80s, what it was like 10, 20 years ago, that the, the, the AIDS crisis was like, it basically equaled HIV. So we, well, I know that I was growing, when I grew up, I really couldn't, I didn't know much about HIV apart from the fact that, that it was so attached to the, the original crisis, uh, which is so important to know, but not the modern picture at all. Seems to be some sort of a moral judgment on the type of people who contract HIV and the type of people who have put themselves in a situation where they could get HIV. And I think that's a broader conversation that we need to have around sex and around pleasure and around embracing those things. So, you know, if you take HIV out of the equation, we're, we still really struggle just to talk about our sex lives. The stigma around it is still really persistent but that's different to what it was as well i think the the homophobia that exists now is complex and i think i worry that there is still although it's it's illegal to discriminate against people on the basis of their um status i think there is still bound to be some employment discrimination there as well for example i knew a guy who lost his job at a restaurant after revealing his status to an employer who you know he was he was he'd worked there a long time he was in a really comfortable situation working with his manager um, and the moment that he revealed his HIV status he lost his job the biggest challenge is stigma 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 what do we mean by stigma quite often what that is about for people is about shame about shame they might feel uh, within themselves or about shame that other people might project onto them. One thing the HIV epidemic has taught us is that shaming, blaming and wagging fingers at people does not help. So if anything that we've learned from the last 40 years is that kindness and compassion and understanding and information sharing is the way ahead. You can't bully people into behaving the way that you wish they would. That's just human nature. So a little bit of kindness goes a long way. It's clear that people's experience of living with HIV differs enormously and what it reflects kind of their social and their racial and economic categories where they are. Well, I just been hearing guys talking about it's the whole thing about dating. Would you date somebody who was HIV positive? But I don't think the assumptions are still there as they once were. I think there's issues around people if you're dating or if you're speaking to people. I think these days, because a lot of dating is done on, online, on social media, people feel very free to ask all sorts of questions. They wouldn't dream of asking you if you were having a pint in a pub with them. Sometimes people ask about your HIV status. It's the first thing they ask you in a conversation. And again, that's not appropriate. You need to start chatting to people. And then you might ask around their HIV status. We all know someone or some people within our friendship groups who would say, oh, I just could date someone who's positive. And you wonder why, because over 90% of people at the moment who are identifying as positive are also undetectable. That really is a killer stigma. HIV activism is still really important today for a few reasons. So the, the bottom line is, is that HIV stigma hasn't gone away. You know, people still have a fear of sharing the HIV status with other people and a fear of rejection for that. We still live in a world where gay men are confronted on social media with phrases like clean only. 
um, which is a, a phrase that I absolutely despise because it implies that somebody living with HIV is a dirty person. And there's still a fear for people to regularly test, which is a really important factor. You know, the more people test for HIV, the more people that know the HIV status, then they can be on effective treatments and completely get rid of um, any possibility of being able to pass HIV onto somebody else. It's not over. Activism really works. Um, that HIV doesn't discriminate and that we shouldn't either. Also just the basic principles that healthcare is a human right and that pleasure is a human right. I think the urgency of the first decade and a half of the crisis um, pushed people to um, be radical in the way that they spoke and protested and that um, treatments kind of um, separated um, people living with HIV into people who could access those treatments and people who couldn't. And when that separation came, the kind of radical push um, softened. And actually, originally, um, HIV and AIDS activism thought really big. It thought about universal health care and free access to treatments. And, and that's part of what has been lost. I think people can help with HIV awareness and activism, first of all, by educating yourself you know, um, make sure that you know the facts about HIV, um, that it's not something uh, to be scared of if somebody tells you that they're HIV positive. Um, and also, you know, stand up for people who are living with HIV. Um, if you see something on social media or you read something in a newspaper, challenge it. And then the other way that you can kind of get involved with activism and awareness raising is to support your local HIV organizations you could volunteer you could look for campaigns um, through organizations like George Heist Trust but also on a national level through organizations like National AIDS Trust. In my work especially um, I've learned that um, that all women and all people of colour will disappear from the history of HIV and AIDS activism um, if we don't actively teach about and um, remember them. U equals U. So that means that undetectable equals untransmittable. And just to break that down a wee bit more, when somebody is on effective HIV medication, for 97% of people in the UK, that will mean that the amount of the virus in their system will go down to such a low level that the tests can't find it. That means that they're undetectable. And over the past eight years or so that I've been volunteering and working in this field, we can now say there's been so many studies done, we can say categorically that there is scientifically zero chance of somebody who is undetectable being able to pass HIV on to anybody else. Now, that message bears repeating because last year, Terence Higgins Trust did a national survey and it turns out that only 19% of the UK population is aware of that fact. So that has massive implications. People living with HIV who are on effective meds can't pass it on. And this is the one thing you take away from watching this video. Please, please keep that in your head. And I would challenge you to maybe tell to other people about that. What a wonderful thing that now we're getting to the point where um, you can't transmit it if you're positive uh, and you're on medication. The education around telling people that it is safe to, it's safe to date with HIV and it's safe to date somebody with HIV is slowly getting out of there. I had not heard of undetectable two years ago, um, which is ridiculous because it existed for a long time. U equals U, undetectable equals untransmittable. In terms of HIV transmission, we are the safest people. Well, we can hope that no one will be um, diagnosed HIV, or if they do, it will go back to the days of, um, oh, you have the clap, two shots, come back two weeks, now you go and you start taking phone numbers when you go to the medical center. <laughs> because, all right, are you coming and go? I'm going my last day. All right, fine. Give me your number. Call me tomorrow. So we can hope that it goes to that point that it just becomes, oh, I have HIV. All right, call me when you, you know, got your shot and you're clear. My hope is that education increases um, for the science, but also for the people. The changes that I hope to see over the next 10 years is that we make progress towards eradicating all new cases of HIV in the UK. George House Trust, along with our partners at LGBT Foundation and BHA for Equality and Manchester 
uh, Greater Manchester Social Care, Care Trust are working towards ending all new cases of HIV in 35 years, and that can be done. If I could tell people today one thing about HIV, uh, I think it would be to have hope. And that sounds really easy, me saying this, because I've come out the other side of it. But the fear and the terror that's always attached itself to this condition is just no longer viable. It's not a thing anymore. I work on the Positive Speakers Programme at George House Trust. We've been doing a lot of work talking to young people in Manchester in schools, asking them, telling them about information and stuff. And I think the attitude of young people and their willingness to ask questions and challenge stigma, that's really, really important, I think. My flatmate, Nate, the one who couldn't give blood, he told me he's got a partner who's HIV positive. He also told me there's this pill now that you can take to stop transmission. It protects you. And Nate was so open to me about it. He said, my partner's HIV positive and we're both protected. Like he was telling me he was popping to the shop to pick up some milk. He felt protected. This little blue pill. Like a Tic Tac. U equals U. 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 U equals U.